Hello, thanks for joining me. I'm Nancy. Um, I wanted to talk today about um, something that's, that's important for us to remember in the book of Judges chapter 6. Uh, the children of Israel were going up against the Midianites. They had, um, well, I'll just read it. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. And so it was, when Israel had sown, that the Midianites came up, and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them. And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come unto Gaza, and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. For they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude. Um, for both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. Okay, so this is definitely a picture depicting what the children of Israel were up against. You know, when, when God is with you, who can be against you? But when God certainly turns his back on you, man, it can be really devastating. It can really affect your life in a big, huge way. You know, when we neglect God, when we forget all about him, and we take him for granted, and we, we just completely walk away, and we get caught up with the cares of the world, and I know we all do it, right? Uh, we all drift away at some point, you know, and we come back, we realize, <laughs> you know, because you'll always know, because God will nudge you. <laughs> He'll let you know, you know, especially because um, God, God giveth and God, take, he taketh away. <laughs> you know, we, we have his blessings, but sometimes, you know, when we veer too far off, he will let us know in a way we won't like especially if you're one of his, because he chastises his own, right? And that's out of love that he does that because he wants to bring you back because we're married to him in his marriage. You know, we don't go leaving him or deserting him. We always come back to him because that is the most important relationship we have in our life. It's with us, be between us and God. All right. Um, and so... Uh, but yeah, they were surrounded by these Midianites, these grasshoppers. You know, there were so many of them. For multitude, they're, they're referred to as grasshoppers. And um, these people destroy it. Can you imagine? It's bad enough for you to put in all the hard work of planting and, you know, taking care of your vineyard and planting all the fruits and the harvest and looking forward to that for your families, to feed your families. And then the enemies come and they not only take it they don't even take it for themselves they take it and they destroy it that's like really painful to see I mean, it's a painful thing to watch you know good perfectly good food that can sustain life being destroyed by the enemies that's how much they were hated and uh, so Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord now this is the main thing that I wanted to raise awareness about no matter how hard or difficult things can get in life we always have the opportunity to cry out to God for mercy there's always a chance and for as long as there is always a chance there's always hope all right so you can cry out to him for mercy as long as there are air in your lungs <laughs> a person can always cry out to God for mercy and repent, you know, turn from the things that offend God to begin with, you know, and that, that means looking at yourself and saying, okay, what am I doing in my life that God is not pleased with? Let me get rid of it now, because if things are going bad for you, then you know certainly that you got to get rid of some, something that you're doing is really offend, offensive to God. So when you realize that, you turn from it and you, you cry out to him and you, you know, you repent you know, and that is a wonderful gift that God gives mankind, the ability to uh, repent, because he certainly is a merciful God. He certainly is loving, loving and kind. And once again, he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance and believe on him and, and submit to him. That way he could have abund an abundant life. And once again, I don't mean abundant financially, but I do, but it could be you know, he blesses you with everything you need in life to be happy. But those blessings that he bestows upon you are the fruits of the spirit, which is, uh, you know, peace. You can't put a price on peace or happiness or joy. You cannot put a price tag on any of those things. They are priceless. And when you have that, you have everything. You have the wealth 
the inheritance of God. You have salvation. You know where you're going to wind up. You know, when we die, we, we transition out. And we um, To be absent from our bodies is to be present with the Lord. And it's a wonderful place. Okay, so anyway, they cried out. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage, and I delivered you out of the house of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drave them out from before you and gave you their land. I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. So we're not to fear before our enemies. We are, the perfect love casts out fear. So if we are fearing, we have not been made perfect in faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you've got to really, you know, those that um, don't fear, are those that, you know, know that God has their back. All right. When God has your back and, uh, and you know that he's with you every moment. I mean, when you know God and yourself, your confidence is so... You have total confidence in the Most High. You know him one-on-one, -on -one, personally, up close and personal. And he has revealed to you, and He, you have seen him in action in your life. And there is no doubt whatsoever of what he can do and what he does and what he says he does. Whatever he says goes, and whatever he says he's going to do, he does it. All right? So if we have any, like... um problem you know the problem's usually with us and not with him <laughs> god does all things perfectly so anyway uh but we don't fear before enemies you know one time i was going for a walk around the block and there was this big huge um pit bull that was unrestrained he did not have on a leash he sat there in the front of his house and when he saw me oh my goodness he was growling he began to really show his teeth and growl look like he was just ready to start you know charging at me but i had no fear and uh, and i had to show no fear and i i stared him down i had to stand there it was a very uncomfortable moment very awkward but uncomfortable it could could have gone either way <laughs> but you know you just can't show fear and because you know essentially if you know God's word, he tells you that he puts all, you put all things under your feet. Nothing has power over you. You put all things under your feet. He's given us dominion over everything that creepeth on the ground. Okay. So, um, but anyway, we're not to fear. And, but when we fear our enemies and we, you know, then, uh, then they have the potential of ruling over us. We're giving them power that we don't want to ever give them. So it says here, and I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whom in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. There came an angel of the Lord and sat under the oak, which was in Ophrah. Oh, let me skip down here. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this day, in go in thy might, and thou shalt uh, save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? So he was appointing uh, Gideon to... Um, he was appointing him the task of leading the children of Israel to go out and to um, handle this problem. And he said unto him, this is Midian, uh, Gideon saying, uh, Lord, wherewith shall I save uh, Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. So God is able to raise up anyone he feels like it. <laughs> Remember, when I am weak, that's when I am strong. You know, God can uh, set anyone and strengthen them and uh, and prepare them to go against these um, these troops. You know, these these um, these enemies. And uh, it says here, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. So remember David, how he went against Goliath. And uh, five smooth stones was all he needed. You know, when we are in the body of Christ, we are like one man. We make, we make up the body of Christ. We are like lively stones, fitly framed together that make up the body of Christ. And uh, and also, you know, um, in the book of Revelations, it talks about how, um, 
when it's referring to the Antichrist, right? You know, that is the number of a man and his number is 666. Okay, so we make up the body of Christ, but the, Lucifer has his own uh, his own body. <laughs> you know, those secret society people that worship the, the devil, they're all part of uh, his body, okay? So there's one third. I think it was in the book of Ezekiel where they, you know, the, he divided the hair. He was... Ezekiel was instructed, I think it was Ezekiel, don't mark my words, I have to go back and double check, but where he had the hair and he was, he divided it three ways. So it was in thirds and two thirds, you know, uh, were, went someplace and they were like chaff in the wind, but one third was folded into the hem of the garment and, and um, stayed with Ezekiel. I'll go back and check, don't mark my words, I, I may be wrong about the reference, but but at the point intake is like there is a remnant chosen by grace unto salvation. And that one third is safe and secure in Christ. The Lord is our refuge. And though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil because his rod and his staff, it comforts us. We can go through anything that this world has to dish out to us. And we are strengthened and we are safe and secure in Christ. We come as one man. All right. That's the body of Christ. So I wanted to uh, put that out there. Uh, it's very important to remember. Fear not. You can cry out to God whenever you need him. He has your back. We're not alone. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. And uh, I have I know that at all time I have the multitude of counselors in heaven and the cloud of witnesses and the archangels and my spirit team in heaven and my my guardian angels that have been assigned to me to protect me and my beloved ancestors also <laughs> keep watch after me i have my spiritual bodyguards who protect me and go with me everywhere i go i am never alone and that is how you have to see it. That is how well you need to know your maker. You need to have a one-on-one. -on -one. You need to be tight with God. Know him. He's your husband. You know, in a marriage, uh, when you have a spouse, you know, you spend time, or you're supposed to anyway. <laughs> it never happened with me and mine, but, um, but you're supposed to. <laughs> when you are equally yoked, you're supposed to spend time together with one another, knowing one another, uh, giving your cares, uh, your worries and concerns, opening up, knowing uh, your interests, your needs, your, your desires, your, um, all your thoughts, your feelings, your aspirations. You know, you open up and you know one another. It's an equal give and take. It's 50-50. And, um, and you, have, you grow closer together. You, you go through everything in life, through thick and thin. And this is the kind of relationship you have with God. You know, he's with you. You talk to him openly. You express all your worries and concerns. You come boldly before his throne of grace. And you pour your heart out to him. And, and you love him, you know, because when he comes through for you time and time again, fighting all your battles, He's there. Um, he comes to bat whenever somebody against, comes against you. The God is right there, ready to handle it for you. That's how much he loves you. And you are in good hands with him. And he never leaves you. He's like, I never feel alone, truly. You know, I live, I'm a single woman. And, um, and I'm happy that way. I mean, I'm truly happy that way, although God... <laughs> God really wants to bless me with a spiritual spouse, but I keep telling him, you know, you are my spouse. I don't need another one. <laughs> I've already been married twice, you know. I, I, I was not equally yoked either time. So I've learned my lessons, but um, but I, I guess God feels that I should <laughs> probably have a husband. I don't know. <laughs> But I'm not looking. <laughs> I tell him, let me just work on myself. I'm happy, Lord. <laughs> but anyway, that's in God's hands. I certainly am not praying for that, you know, but it is something. I just keep asking, please don't stick Cupid's arrow in, in anybody that I know from my past. <laughs> don't, don't do that, Lord. <laughs> but at the certain things are out of, out of your hands, right? Okay, so anyway, um, so... They smite the minute he, he was uh, instructed. Gideon was instructed to go. He was gonna, God was going to use him to smite the Midianites as one man. All right, as one body. So you skip down to chapter 7. Then Jerubel, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Moray in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. 
lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. So see, God is wanting to make sure that in this situation where he's about to bail them out, all right, using Gideon, but he wants to make sure the children of Israel are not going to be proud and take credit for what God is about to do. God is going to demonstrate his glory and um, his power, his power to save, all right, uh, people that um, seemed to be at, um, you know, at the underdog. Okay, and he's going to do it. And he did not want there to be like a huge amount of soldiers taken on the Midianites. No, he didn't. He said it was too many. So now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people saying, whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned to the people 20 and 2,000 and there remained 10,000. So there were 22,000 men you know, soldiers, people <laughs> that were too afraid to go against the enemy. Now, they were fearful, all right? So, so they were told essentially, you know, go, go home, <laughs> okay? And so there remained 10,000. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Every one that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, every one that boweth down upon his knees to drink. So, you know, some that lapped uh, the water like a dog, all right? And remember, that just brings to mind the verse um, in, uh, in the New Testament where the woman uh, was begging Jesus for bread. And he said um, I, he has to go and give to the, to the, um, to the Jews. And, and she, uh, he can't, he can't um, give to the dogs. You know, he was calling her a dog. And um, now, normally, a person might take offense and, and you know, argue about that. Like, but, but no, this woman was very humble. And she said, um, Lord, um, but the king giveth crumbs unto, you know, the, even the crumbs fall into the table, under the table um, for the dogs to eat. And he was pleased with what she said. Even, uh, even crumbs fall from the table, you know, for the dogs to eat. You know, so she was Gonna, she was going to be completely satisfied and happy and grateful even for crumbs that would fall from the master's table, you know. And he was so pleased with that, you know. He, he, he called her daughter, I think. I have to go back and read that, but you know which verse I'm referring to. So it's talking about those that are humble and those that are grateful. See, because in our weakness, that's where we're strong. So even though we might seem, you know, a lot of people mistake people that are friendly, people that are kind, people that are, have you ever noticed in your life, they look at you as easy targets. They completely mis misjudge you. <laughs> that has been the story of my life. But when you are weak, then you are strong, you know, and uh, I'm very strong internally. And, but people have always misjudged that. And so it's like the underdog is always misjudged, but I always root for the underdog because I know better. <laughs> They're the ones with the real power. So he brought down the people into the water and, okay. So, and the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth were 300 men, but all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, by the 300 men that lapped, will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thine hand, and let all the other people go every man unto his place. So this is a very, very important thing to remember, because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed. And though heaven and earth pass away, his word remaineth forever. So it is uh, something you can rely on, something that does not change, no matter how the world changes, because they, you know, these devils are, who are in control of everything, you know, they, they change God's laws or they try to. They don't get away with the damn thing, okay? <laughs> They're about to answer for all of that.
God is cleaning house. But we who are alive on the earth at this time, this exciting time, when God shakes terribly the the earth uh, to uh, rid it of the sinners, you know, the people that are bent on destroying his planet, that hate God and love death, you know, um, we're going to have to witness a lot of that. But uh, God is going to be with us. Though 10,000 fall on our right or our left, you know, yet it'll, it shall not come near us. So that is the faith we have to have and no fear because he's told us of these things of old. He's already told us many of these things of old, you know, but certainly there are books that I'm going to be reading from the Apocrypha as well and uploading it because there's information in there that is pertinent to the time that we're living in. And I know that I have not studied the Apocrypha book, so um, excuse me, I'm looking forward to uh, making time to do that. But anyway, um, this is a clear, a clear cut story of how God is going to bring deliverance and victory to the children of Israel who were few in number. But that is to illustrate his power, his glory. And uh, he is almighty God, and nobody can frustrate God. Nobody can fight against God and win when he is ready to go to bat for you. And that's that. End of story. There's no argument. And so the enemies want to come up to you and argue with you. No, don't give them the time of day because they've chosen sides, you know. And that's all you can do. You can pray for your enemies from a distance, and you can forgive your enemies. From a distance <laughs> doesn't mean you have to talk to any of them because uh, certainly you know choose this day whom you will serve and um and i know who i who i choose to serve but remember these midianites were like grasshoppers for multitude there were so many of them without number and they were so the children of israel were so totally outnumbered but god in his uh, amazing power i mean he just um took care of it, you know, and that's just how it is. So I wanted to put this positive message out there. <laughs> I hope it strengthens anybody who might be fearing in this time of uncertainty when they see things going on in the world. Don't worry about it. God, God is in complete control. He has everything under, nothing happens by accident or chance. All the, you know, the devils are just doing their thing that they've always done all along. Uh, in, in snaring people, entrapping people, lying, deceiving, manipulating, cheating, killing, maiming. You know, it's the thing from the beginning of time. There's nothing new under the sun. They've always behaved this way. <laughs> the good news is that all this is wrapping up relatively soon. So we get, and God gets to have a people for himself. And uh, this earth, we're going to have heaven on earth, where and dwelleth righteousness. And so it's going to be a very powerful time, a very happy time to be with the Lord. And you got to keep your eyes fixed on the straight and narrow and also the, um, the end goal. And that is um, uh, an eternity with Christ. So I just wanted to put this out there. I hope everybody has a blessed day. Peace out, everyone. Bye.